CNN has learned that as Gonzalez ran into the White House, he bowled over a female officer who was trying to close one of the mansion's double doors. That officer, a source tells CNN, was able to get up, chase the 42-year-old, and eventually tackle him just outside the East Room. It may not be the single greatest misnomer in American government, the Secret Service, which is secret no more. The various trepidations, trip-ups, slip-ups, and smack-in-the-face idiocy of a unit charged with protecting the President of the United States has cost their leader her job and perhaps needs to roll many more heads and change a dangerous culture of indifference. Welcome to Midpoint. Her reporting helped to break the story about a man in the elevator with the President who happened to be carrying a gun and no one bothered to check him out. She's the White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner, Susan Crabtree. Susan, good to see you again. Nice to see you, too. What was it that came to your mind the very first time you were digging on this story and you heard someone tell you that there was a gun in the elevator with the president? I can only imagine you had to say, would you please repeat that and make sure I heard that correctly? Well, I actually w wasn't thinking it was the biggest, outra most outrageous thing until I learned that the, secret se the security officer was not cleared to have the gun. Uh, that no security officers, uh, especially private contractors, are allowed to carry guns within any arm's reach of the president, uh, only law enforcement officers, and, and they have to be cleared. So that was uh, a key difference for me that made the story uh, much more interesting and concerning as well. As you started to talk to people about this and in being around the Beltway, do you get that sense that this is, and we've used the word here, I know you used it in your story as well, that this is just a cultural cover-up here? This is not something that all of a sudden has hit us in the head in the last week or two. This has been going on for years. Yeah, I actually do have that, a real sense of that. I want to say clearly though that the, the Secret Service, are they have the most difficult job that I can imagine, much harder than mine, and I have a deep respect for most of the officers that I've ever encountered. Uh, and a good rapport with them. Uh, I think this has to do with senior leadership, not holding people accountable. Uh, the Secret Service kind of operates the way it's been described to me uh, as a, a family. They support one another. Uh, they help each other when they're down. And if they make mistakes, sometimes they're a little too protective and they cover up for them. Um, that's what a source has told me. That's a direct quote um, that this is a culture of cover up. We seem to hear a lot of stories that talk about members of the Secret Service, and I'm going to agree with you. It's a tough job. You have to throw your body in front of somebody to take a bullet. That's basically your job at the end of the day. But we continue to hear and read a lot of stories about the agents themselves being downtrodden, being beaten down, feeling as if it simply is just not a job that is even worth having anymore. So are we getting to a point right now where that, that apathy is not only going to affect the president, but other elected officials, and it does trickle down eventually to what becomes national security. Well, that's why I think that uh, we shouldn't be afraid to have these stories come out. I know at the hearing uh, the other day where Pearson testified, uh, some lawmakers were making the point that we are a country that scrutinizes our organizations and that shouldn't be seen, that should be seen as a really, a, a really good thing because the Secret Service needs to do some soul searching right now. They have uh, so many different, a string of problems uh, from prostitutes to security breaches uh, that are so serious, nothing could be more concerning to the stability of our government. So yes, I think this is a, a great time for the Secret Service to talk about morale and talk about whether they need more money, training, uh, what have you. I'm sure Congress would be willing to provide. Uh, it, they already are a $1.5 billion annual budget, but this is so important to Congress. Um, it was a nonpartisan issue. I'm sure they would be able to get a for more money for whatever they needed. I got about 30 seconds left here. Have we gotten to the point now we understand that Julia Pearson says she resigned. You tend to think she got pushed out, but she was a 30 year veteran of the Secret Service right now. She was only there for 18 months. They've got to go outside the culture of the Secret Service to find someone because you get the feeling that if they bring another one in who's been there a long time, the same stuff is going to continue to happen. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think that Josh Ernest was was suggesting that yesterday when he said that that was one of the things that they were considering. Uh, this, they'll, they'll have a uh, independent panel that was convened and they have to get recommendations to the president by De uh, to Jay Johnson, the DHS secretary, and the president by December 15th. And one of their recommendations will be the next person. But yes, um, the Secret Service has had someone come from within their rank serve as director since 1932. So it's mm. long history. 
Keep following the story. Susan Crabtree, the White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner. Great reporting, Susan. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Next hour on Midpoint, the FCC bears down on the NFL. We need to bear down on the need to stop dangerous hate and rhetoric from and about Muslims. After the break, Congressman Renee Elmers on the Ebola crisis.